If you're climbing and you clip a bolt that you come up to, how do you know that the part in the rock is gonna stay in the rock? Did you know that the bolt doesn't hold you? The rock does. Now, both of these bolts were installed at the same time, except this one came out and this one actually stayed in until it broke. So what was the difference? EP800 is an epoxy that you can put glue and bolts in and no, epoxy is not glue, but we call these glue and bolts. Therefore, we call the stuff we glue it with glue. This stuff is $20 and Hilti 500 V3 is $88. So before I stick this in a rock and trust my life to it, I'd like to know a few things about it. So we decided to do a really cool experiment where we're testing this about every hour or so to find out how strong it is as it's curing. Does it cure underwater? And does it cure if it's below freezing? We have tested the Hilti quite a bit on this channel. We've done it in shear and in tension and sandstone and concrete and granite. It's a great epoxy. But the problem is it's a lot of money and it's sometimes hard to get. And we used to use liquid rock 500 and we tested that in concrete and granite and sandstone. We tested that a bunch too. And we liked it, but they discontinued it. They discontinued it because this was coming out on the market. Now there was a gap between that being discontinued and this being available. But we finally have this available in our store because I kept poking MKT for a while because I was really excited about having a single tube that was gray, something that requires a normal caulk gun and is gray. Did you know epoxy is red? The good stuff, it's red because the inspectors want to be able to see it from afar that you used a pure epoxy. That's what I've been told. They want it to look obnoxious. We don't want that to look like obnoxious at our crags, but people who want to put in the best bolts with the best glue end up using the Hilti red stuff. Now, the double tube of this is red and we've made a couple shorts about it and we've liked it. And now finally, finally, we have a single tube that is great. Now, MKT Fastening worked with Chemofast to make this and they told me that this is better than Liquid Rock 500, that it meets the same certifications as the Hilti 500 V3. Now, the way we designed this experiment is not to test it in real rock. I know people like to see that, but if I'm trying to isolate the thing I wanna test, it is honestly better to do it in a lab. I know, I don't usually say that, but sometimes doing real science is helpful. Because rock is such a variable, we decided to use these pipes that Lucas and his son Abel hollowed out and put some threads in for us and this adapter that it fits in. So every time we break something, we can just pull the pipe out and replace it with the next sample, making these tests more consistent and easier. The next thing we wanted to do is pull it straight out of the hole because that is going to, I assume, be the worst case scenario for the epoxy. And the last consideration is what bolt we were going to use. Well, I don't want the bolt to break low because I really do want to push the limits of the epoxy. If the epoxy holds the strongest bolt we have in our store, that's good enough. And so we had the same bolt in all the tests. We pulled them all straight out. And the only variable now is when we pulled it and if it was wet, and if it was frozen. But you get the point. Now let's talk about what to expect. Uh, gel time is the time you have to work with it. The time that you can put the glue in and orientate it the way you want before it sets up. Now once it feels firm, don't pull on it because the curing time is going to be hours longer. Now if it's 100 degrees out, it's going to cure much faster. Your gel time is going to be a lot shorter than if it's only room temperature, which in this room, it's about room temperature. So at room temperature, we're expecting around 11 hours for a full cure and 30 minutes of gel time. Now the problem with vinyl ester, the AC100 gold that so many people have used for glue and bolts is that when it's a hot out, the, the gel time is so short that sometimes you fill the hole up and you go to put the bolt in and it's already gump gooey and you can't get your bolt in, nor is that going to like, cure properly and hold your bolt, you're compromising the glue at that point. And so when it's real hot out, that's not a really good option. Luckily, this is. When it is 100 degrees out, you have seven minutes of working time. That's a lot. And we do have a bunch of spare nozzles in case it is hard to get from one hole to another because I think spare nozzles is super helpful for developers. Now the specs say it doesn't go down to freezing. It only goes down to 41 Fahrenheit or five degrees Celsius. 80 minutes of gel time, so it's gonna feel like it's super slowly curing and it does take 48 hours to cure. We stuck it in my freezer and my freezer is negative five degrees Celsius. So we installed all of our bolts and one hour later, we went to touch one of them and it was like caramel. It was still gooey. There was no point in pulling it. At two hours, we were able to put one in the brake test machine and it pulled out at a whopping 0 0.17 kilonewtons, AKA nothing. But at three hours, it jumped 
quite a bit to 24.72 kilonewtons, which is not something you want to use the bolt until it's cured because you could compromise the bond, but that is pretty good for a third hour because this is supposed to take 11 hours at room temperature. Now at four hours, we got 64.87 kilonewtons, which is impressive, I must say, for the bolt because the bolt didn't break, it still pulled out. But at five hours at 74.06 kilonewtons, the bolt finally broke, giving us full strength out of the epoxy. Now, this is where it's getting interesting because you have a range in which that bolt is gonna break at and you have a range in which that epoxy will hold. And so they're gonna kind of overlap and you can see that in some of our samples where at six hours, it pulled out at 81.4 kilonewtons, but then at 8.5 hours, it pulled out at 65. And then at nine and a half hours, the bolt broke. And at 11 hours, the bolt broke. So basically you start to float in that 60 to 80 range between the epoxy and the bolt kind of having a tug of war. Now, what is full strength for the epoxy? Well, that depends on diameter and depth and stuff. So if you have a half inch rod inside of a four and three eighths deep hole, then it is rated for 60 kilonewtons. So anything we're getting from 60 KN and above is just bonus strength. And we're achieving that around four hours when the curing time is 11. Now, before we talk about whether or not it works when it's frozen, I've been asked quite a bit whether or not it works in a wet hole. Now, the instructions it comes with literally tells you how to put it in a wet hole. And typically they claim it's got a slower curing time, but we tested it wet after five and a half hours thinking it was going to take longer. Wow, it didn't break. We're gonna go to the bigger piston. And the bolt broke at 76 and a half kilonewtons. And because we had a second sample, we pulled it at the 11 hour mark, which is fully cured in room temperature when it's dry, and it broke the bolt at 71.6 KN. Now what happens if it's freezing outside? Let me show you something you might not wanna find out when you go out on a project. What happens when this stuff gets really cold is it's very viscous. Doesn't wanna come out, especially when you have a nozzle that you gotta get it through. And so we've I've dealt with this before where you're just pushing and pushing and pushing trying to get it out because you grab the wrong glue for the temperature you're working in. AC100 would probably work better in colder environments. It is rated for 14 degrees Fahrenheit, but this stuff is not. And so that is a problem you would come across but the question is, will it cure? One trick you can do with either AC100 or this EP800 is you can either put it in your jacket or you can put hand warmers around it or you can keep the cartridge warm, but if the environment itself is freezing, well, after 11 hours, it was still goopy on us. So we waited 24 hours and it had a Play-Doh consistency and we waited 48 hours and it finally started to cure enough to where it, we got 2.9 kilonewtons. And then we did it at 72 hours and we got 5.78 kilonewtons. And you can see what's happening here is it is ever so slowly curing, but epoxy does not like when it's below what it is rated for. I know. So I think EP800 is great. And that's awesome because I have hundreds of tubes of it now. I'm not biased, I tested it. So I think it's great if I'm wearing a light puffy or I'm hot. Now. If I'm wearing a big puffy and I'm super cold, then I think a vinyl lester is gonna be better. You can see that we have all the data in this graph and we also put it in this chart so you can geek out on it going up and then right because that's more or less what it does. We knew what the graph was gonna look like before we started. We just didn't know <laughs> at what angle. But Ryan, you said there were 17 tests. I don't see 17 tests, but wait, there's more because I still got three more in the freezer at the time of filming this. After we break test those, we will add that data to the graph and the chart. And you will find that if you sign up for emails at hownotto.com slash sign up. Also, if you just really don't want to be updated on what we've caught coming out, you could probably just go to the EP800 product page, find the information there, or the Bolting Bible in the glue-in section, or the Bolting Bible in the book of numbers. It's on our website. It's available for you guys because we want this to be helpful. If for some weird reason you really like red, it does come in the double tube and we have that as well. These colors do fade out. This brown with for liquid rock 500, it kind of faded into this green tintish and then the red kind of fades out after the UV hits it into this light pink. And so if you are on sandstone, maybe that is a good choice for you. But I do like this color more than other ones. And AC100, Final Lester, also is a great color. We put a lot of energy making sure we have a lot of bolt options and we wanna make sure you have two 
glue options. So the AC100 when it's cold, the AP800 when it's warm out, and all the glue-ins you probably need. Go to hownotto.com if you need any bolting hardware. Cheers.